Make sure nobody gets you. <laughs> Not out here. None of these folks have fans. All right, my name is DeWitt Lacey. I am an attorney with the law firm of uh, Burris, Nissen, Baum, Curry, and Lacey. And we are here today to talk about uh, what happened to Marquise uh, Jackson, who's standing here with me with his family. Uh, by way of some Okaloosa County Sheriff's Department officers or deputies. Now I'll say this, folks. There's been a lot of comical comments about what happened um, and comments about the initial videos that had been released by law enforcement, right? Uh, the nature of the officer's mistake, uh, their reaction, uh, and what has been told to law enforcement, or what has been told by law enforcement to the public, is that everything's okay, right? The officer who made this horrible mistake, the one officer, they say, uh, has been now terminated or resigned, and all is well. Marquise was not hit by any of the dozens of rounds that were fired into that vehicle, so we should all be okay and go home uh, and have a nice evening. But that isn't the truth. That is not the truth. If that were the truth, I ask you this. I want you to go talk to the psychologists who see our war veterans, it's even though some of them may have not been struck or hit by bullet fire. They still have a lot of psychological issues and turmoil and trauma from those wars, from those engagements. If we think that that is OK, I would say, Talk to the refugees and or folks who come here from war-torn countries. Though they may have not been shot themselves, they still bear the wounds of the psychological trauma of being involved in this type of violence. You know, the difference is Marquise does not live in a war-torn country, or so we believe. Marquise uh, did not participate uh, in some type of civil unrest in a country that's uh, experiencing a lot of turmoil. He's right here in Fort Walton. And he had all these rounds fired at him. And of course, there's trauma that comes with that. Luckily, fortunately, he survived miraculously. You're covered. You are covered, brother. But miraculously, he survived. And he's here to talk about it today, OK? And I, he's got a statement he wants to tell you all. What we also will be doing today is releasing some videos of more shots that were fired at Marquis when he was handcuffed in the back of a car, already had been searched, had not committed any crimes. The officers told Marquis that in order for them to give him relief, that is to get him out of the situation where he was being fired at while handcuffed in the back of his patrol car, that he had to sit up and allow them to shoot rifles around his silhouette to knock out the windows so they could see inside. Apparently around here, you can't see inside officers' glass windows. I don't know, maybe they have tinted windows. It sounds ridiculous, but even more frightening is the aspect of using a human for target practice. That is unwarranted, it is unconstitutional, and we are gonna be filing a claim for damages, soon to be followed by a lawsuit because of what happened to Marquise. And I know Marquise has some words that he wants to share with you right now. I want to give him that opportunity. Marquise. I want to start off by thanking God for uh, keeping me here with my family and friends because there was a chance that I could have died from each bullet that was shot at me. 
On November 12th, my life changed forever. I haven't been the same since. Will I ever have a peace of mind again? Imagine being shot at a tremendous amount of times while handcuffed in the backseat of a cop car by the ones we call to protect our community. My life flashed in front of my eyes as I hear gunshots and feel bullets going across my face. I instantly ducked my head while shattered glass fell on top of me. I began to pray, asking God to protect me as shots still coming from different directions. After many rounds of fire, there was a slight break. Officers then told me to put my hands in the air and sit up straight. I knew I couldn't put my hands in the air because I was handcuffed and I couldn't sit up straight because they were aiming at my head. I thought my life was over. I sat up straight looking around and I see many guns aiming at me. I then left it up to God again as I faced forward, closing my eyes, asking for help. Then they began shooting again. I found a way to rest my hands on the shattered window area to prove I haven't done anything wrong. Moments later, they swarmed the car searching for weapons. There was nothing found. Looking around, I see my parents crying. I only can imagine how much pain that brought them knowing, not knowing if their firstborn was either dead or alive. Picture your children in my situation. How would you feel? I was then held in a cell for hours with nobody knowing anything. After them almost taking my life for no reason, I could only think of the worst. I thought I was never coming home. Eventually, an officer came in the cell and told me I was free to go with no charges. This was the scariest day of my life. I would never call 911 again for an emergency after this. Oklahoma County Sheriff's Department caused so much pain, not only to me and my family, but different families across the world. I deal with flashbacks and nightmares every day. I wish I could get this image out of my head. It has really taken over my mental. As I continue trying to live my normal life, being a part of the NBNO Foundation, giving back to different communities and coaching the youth, I deal with constant reminders of traumatics with this traumatic situation. I pray that one day I'll again be myself. Last but not least, I want to thank everyone for everyone who was standing with me during this difficult time. I love y'all and always remember Jeremiah 29, 20, Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not harm you. Plans to give you hope in the future. God bless. All right. All right. Um, I know uh, that there's some people that, that want to talk here and some people that maybe don't feel as comfortable in front of the cameras as we do. We're civil rights attorneys. We're kind of accustomed to this. Uh, Ms. Quesada, did you have some words that you wanted to say? My name is Julia Quesada. I'm an attorney with Burris, Neeson, Baum, Curry, and Lacey. It is not acceptable that these officers, deputies, and their department is calling this a mistake. It is not okay to call it a mistake. There is no mistake. There was no mistake that Marquise was unarmed. There's no mistake that he had already been searched. There's no mistake that he was already handcuffed in the back of a patrol car when these deputies opened fire. And there's no mistake that the department hasn't released all of the footage or the information related to the shooting. This is not okay. The deputy that shot, that said that he heard an acorn or after the fact that that's a mistake, that's not acceptable. He resigned, that's not accountability. The other deputy that was exonerated, that is not accountability. There has been no accountability, there has been no transparency, and there has been no justice. And we demand that, we demand transparency, we demand accountability, and we demand justice, and we stand with Marquise with this. Does anybody else has any words to say? You know, behind me are our family members uh, and very close family friends of uh, Marquise. Uh, I want to open it up for questions. If anybody uh, has any questions, uh, we're here to answer them today. Um, what's one thing that you want us to share with our viewers? What's the most important thing out of all of this? I hope you show the videos uh, that we've released today to you uh, that show that these officers were firing rifles into the car. You could hear them tell Marquise, no, you gotta sit up so we can shoot around you. This is outrageous, okay? It's outrageous. Uh, it doesn't follow any practice or guidelines of law enforcement and, and or their training. Uh, it is wholly unconstitutional, unwarranted, and shouldn't be accepted, not in this community or any community in America. But I hope that you show those videos, and I hope that you ask questions of the law enforcement uh, community around here and the Okaloosa County Sheriff's Department as to why 
only one officer uh, was reprimanded, right? There was a sergeant on duty who said all of this was okay, who said that it was okay to make Marquise sit up so that they can shoot rifles around his body as a human target. I hope that's what you cover. And sir, you're calling this a fight for justice. What does that justice look like? Uh, accountability. And whether that comes in the form of money, whether that comes in the form of further action uh, by the sheriff's department against the deputies involved, that's what we want. But it can't be swept under the rug if this is just a harmless event where nobody was injured. You have a family here who was praying for their life. Praying for their life that their loved one was not hit or injured when he hadn't committed any crime. Yes, we want to clear Marquise's name. He's not a criminal. He's not a monster. I know we're sitting here in Florida and we're some years off from Trayvon Martin or Michael Brown, but it's the same story. And it's this notion that for black folks, young black men to be seen as monsters and it's okay to shoot at them like this. Well, it's not. That's not what the law says. It's not what the constitution says. And we're here to hold folks accountable. And the this incident have been different if Marquise was white? That is a question I wish that you would ask the law enforcement community. But I think the rush to judgment shown by the sergeant, uh, there are some allegations that were made at the time, uh, which turned out to be untrue. There was no real investigation by law enforcement except, well, we'll handcuff him and put him in the back. And then somehow, I don't know, maybe they thought you were Jason Bourne or somebody, Marquis, said that he escaped from handcuffs, pulled out a silenced weapon and started firing from inside the car. It sounds ridiculous. It sounds ridiculous, and I hope it sounds ridiculous to the public. Uh, so that's what we're here about. The sheriff released a statement earlier this morning saying there are active investigations into all of this. Have you had any contact with that, uh, those cases that are pending now? No, 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 no one has given us a call just yet. I would imagine we'll be hearing from them. And we look forward to working with the law enforcement community to do the right thing. Okay, we look forward. We want to work with law enforcement to help you get it right. Uh, and this is an opportunity for us to make sure that we get it right. And we don't have to have division here. We all saw what happened. And not only was it a mistake, it was an egregious mistake. And there has to be some consequences from it. Anywhere, anybody else? Question? No? NASCAR is on there. Watch that point. Uh, as far as the lawsuit, who exactly are you all hoping to hold accountable for this incident? All the officers who were involved that day. So not just the sergeant uh, and uh, Deputy Hernandez. Well, then he was Deputy Hernandez. Uh, but all the officers who came on the scene afterwards, right? These officers came on the scene with long guns and rifles uh, and shot into this vehicle further and more than what, was, what had previously been released. So they need to be held accountable too. What kind of reform are you hoping to get out of this lawsuit? Maybe there's some better training, right? Uh, maybe there's some better screening about who should be police officers. Here's what I'll have to say. If you are so scared that when an acorn falls on the hood of a, uh, a car, you start doing tumbles and rolls in the street and think that you've been hit, maybe you are unfit to wear the badge and law enforcement probably has to do a better job of screening who gets to carry guns around this community uh, and ensure our safety. Because that surely uh, wasn't any uh, a safe insu insurance uh, from, my, from my standpoint. Anybody else? All right, we appreciate you all. Thank you all for coming uh, and covering this. I think it's important and uh, we look forward uh, to the future. All right. Thank you.